our sponsor. <laughs> the crew patch. This is uh, suiting up before we're getting ready to go. Terry Wilcutt, the pilot. J Apt, MS1. MS2, Tom Akers. MS3, Carl Waltz. And John. <laughs> NASA Mir number three. On our way out to the Astrovan. Still awfully, awfully dark at that hour of the morning, let me tell you. About to light up, though, big, uh, big time. Six seconds there prior to liftoff. The main engines come up to thrust. And we're on our way. First master alarm. <laughs> <laughs> the doggone thing was shaking so much that Terry and I had uh, a real time trying to read the, uh, the scratch pad line of what was going on. Fortunately, we had Tom there to mid-value select between the pilot and the commander. And, he properly informed us what, what was going on with our vehicle. I think the folks that were there at the Cape had a real spectacular view, uh, not only of the SRB separation here, a little after two minutes, but uh, all the way up the East Coast. We're going to get a little bit closer view here. And a special uh, camera in the umbilical wells that uh, was able to capture that. Unfortunately, uh, the external tank came off uh, in darkness, so there wasn't any uh, residual light from the, from the main engines or anything to capture that. Well, once we got on orbit, we opened the payload bay doors to reject some of the heat, of course, uh, produced by the fuel cells and got our first real good uh, look at the space hab in the back end of the payload bay and the orbiter docking system and the trajectory control sensors, those uh, boxes right on the beam in the front of the cargo bay. Very happy to see everything was in good shape. We opened up the hatch to get back into the space hab. A couple hours after launch, uh, after verification that all of the atmosphere back there was good. And it's uh, the first flight of a new habitable volume. It went just great. What a wonderful place to work and uh, have all the logistics and live and sleep. It was just huge. Uh, I mean, it was like a uh, big building inside. And those of you who have offices around JSC know what I mean when I say, uh, this is a lot bigger than any office I've ever had. <laughs> Terry's uh, getting ready here to transfer uh, some of the water, specifically squeezing out a sample into a sample bag for analysis on the ground. And boy, uh, it's a good thing he was in the best shape of anybody on the crew, except maybe Shannon to go do that. That's, uh, it was pretty hard. Here we are uh, checking out one of uh, the JSC experiments on board, a uh, bioreactor, so-called. It, uh, it is designed to supply uh, nutrients to all sides of a cell in three dimensions. Unlike a two-dimensional petri dish, uh, cells can grow just like they do in the living body. We took sterile uh, samples of that, as John will do every uh, week that he's up on orbit to ensure for the principal investigator, a doctor up at Massachusetts Institute of Technology, that everything is working well. Uh, if all goes well, we'll learn how well cartilage, like is in your knees or your nose, uh, grows up there on orbit. Uh, here we are on the second day of the flight, preparing the active rack isolation system, a risk mitigation experiment for space station for test. We tilted the rack out just as people will do hundreds of times on the International Space Station uh, in this thing that uh, about the size of a big vending machine here and uh, about the same weight too. We're real careful with and uh, took all three of us to get that out there and make sure uh, it was all in good shape. Then Carl and I went to work uh, setting it up for what turned out to be many days of tests on board. The idea of uh, that system was to isolate the small vibrations that you have in space uh, for the benefit of experiments such as this one. This is a furnace that was to melt metals, sintered metals uh, are used in everything from machine tools to exotic space structures. Here we are inserting a sample into that furnace for melting and uh, later analysis on the ground. Back in the back, uh, Tom was examining all of his transfer items and getting uh, everything ready uh, for transfer. And here he's getting a computer out that uh, John will need on Mir and putting it into a bag where it can be efficiently transferred as soon as we get docked. Did a fabulous job getting everything ready so that when we docked, bang, it was ready. And everything got over. Uh, it was just super. 
That bright star that you see in the center of the uh, optical site there is the Mir station. And uh, at this point, we're about two miles away. And we're going to show you just a couple time slices here. Now we're about uh, a mile away. Now we're getting to about 600 feet. And this is how we had the cockpit laid out. Terry was uh, in the front, and he was doing the mid-course burns. Jay uh, had the master checklist. And then Tom was doing the handheld laser, and Carl was working the camera as well. John was our communicator. And that uh, left me free to do a little bit of flying. And what you can see here are the forward reaction control jets uh, firing as we're approaching the Mir station. This is uh, approximately 170 feet as we're continuing to close, and you can, uh, you can see the whole Mir station at that point. Uh, Shannon's eye view of us uh, on our approach. Here we're about 10 feet, and you can see the docking module very well coming into the, the payload bay. This is a view out of our uh, truss camera that was located adjacent to our docking system. And you can see that the closure is just ever, ever so slow. It's uh, about a yard in, uh, in 30 seconds, so you almost can't walk that slowly. About this time, uh, Tom is calling pedal overlap, and then when we get to two inches, we fire uh, post-contact thrusters to just nudge the two vehicles together so that we get uh, uh, hard docking. And there was great rejoicing. <laughs> <laughs> On the other side of the hatch, too. <laughs> and uh, this, is, uh, this is Shannon in the docking module, uh, waiting expectantly for uh, our hatch to open here. And uh, Bill is doing that right now. And of course, uh, uh, the Mir 22 crew, uh, Valeri and Sasha and Shannon, are, are there on the other side waiting for us. So Bill goes to shake Valeri's hand and uh, gets uh, brought into the docking module here. And, so, and this is a view from, from their camera on board Mir. And uh, of course, it was, it was a great, just a tremendous celebration uh, meeting together in space. Uh, and of course, here's John and Shannon, uh, you know, glad, glad to be together uh, again after about a six-month uh, separation uh, since they were training together at Star City. And uh, Shannon had the traditional greeting of bread and salt. Uh, it's a traditional Russian greeting, and, and uh, we celebrated uh, together. Well, with mere hard docked uh, to the shuttle and the welcoming ceremonies uh, complete, it was uh, time to go to work, and we got uh, quite a bit of the transfer operations done that first day. This is Terry and I back in the space hab. You can see one of the large Russian pieces of hardware we were bringing home already there, a Kurs unit. We had uh, two of those. We also did, for the first time, uh, powered transfers, where we had uh, scientific experiments under power on shuttle that we powered down and then moved over to Mir. This is Jay one of two uh, incubators that uh, keep a controlled temperature environment uh, for a different, uh, several different varieties of samples in those. Took it over to the uh, new module on Mir, Perota, and inserted it in a locker and, uh, and powered it up. During all of the uh, transfer operations and other activities, Shannon, every day we were there, exercised uh, for two hours each day here on the treadmill in the, the base block. And one of the final transfer items, which Carl uh, mentioned, was the 350 pounds of Russian food we had in the Eris experiment. And this is uh, just checking to make sure we hadn't left any in before we stowed the empty containers. Now we'll take a quick look, a quick tour of uh, Mir. This was my home for six months. Now, as you see, we're going through here, we were going through the docking module, and now this is in uh, Crystal. Um, you can see that there's lots of ventilation tubes, there's lots of wires, there's uh, lots of equipment that's stored there, and there's a bungee cord that sort of helps you uh, navigate back and forth. Uh, actually, oh, well, first we're going to stop off here at the um, greenhouse. Uh, the, due to the slip, I was fortunate and was able to uh, get this started, and it was really sort of neat to see the wheat, see it uh, uh, start to grow. Reminded me of Oklahoma, you know, where I used to live. <laughs> and 
for the first time, just before I left, the wheat was actually going to seed. And so for the first time in space, we had started with the seed and it had gone to seed. And so I think that's just uh, pretty neat. Going on, this is Perota, the new uh, module that came while I was there. And it's full of uh, various scientific equipment. As you can see, there's a glove box, and it just worked outstanding. Actually, everything that, all the United States equipment that was there in Perota worked really, really well. This chair there in the middle is one of the French experiments that came up on progress, and it's left there. There's just lots of equipment uh, in Mir. There's German equipment, uh, French equipment, there's uh, the United States equipment, and it's all there. And it's very difficult to find places to store, uh, store stuff. In the back of Perota, you can see the uh, BTS and the uh, rest of the United States experiments. Now, this is uh, the node, and everything joins up here. And when, after Perota came and then after Pro Progress came, uh, Yuri pointed out to me that for the first time in the history of the Station of Mir, all the nodes were occupied, and that was a new record. Uh, that's what it was designed for, and that's how it uh, got set up. Oh, and this is inside Soyuz. Uh, which was there, and there's our uh, scaphandras. In case there was an emergency, we could have gotten into Soyuz and uh, uh, come home. And the Soyuz is still there, and uh, it's the return vehicle for Valeri and uh, Sasha. This is in the base block, and you can see the uh, uh, table back there. Valeri's back there by the table. The table was sort of the central place in Mir, and that's where, uh, if you weren't working somewhere else, you sort of congregated there to talk, uh, talk to the ground, eat, and do all the various activities that uh, uh, you have. And then uh, you could look, the cosmonauts each had a small uh, cabin on each side, which was very nice. They could keep their personal things there. And then they had a little window that they could look out. And this happens to be uh, Sasha's uh, uh, little cabin and the pictures of uh, his family. He has uh, three-month-old sons, and so he had his pictures uh, hanging up there, and then all their personal equipment, their um, toothpaste and everything to be kept in one place. And then the sleeping bag was hung up on the wall. And as you looked out the uh, window when the shuttle was there, then you could see the shuttle dock there. Uh, also in the base block was a ham radio, and uh, we used it uh, to talk. And many times when we were coming over Houston, uh, you could talk to your family, and Larry and Sasha also like to use the ham radio a lot. This is another view in the base block going toward the Centrona post, and Valeri was uh, headed in that direction. And you can see the bungee cords that were stretched out there that helped you uh, navigate back and forth. This is Inspector. John has just moved in. It was all nice and clean and all picked up, but then all the <laughs> new stuff got in there. And you can see, uh, I like to read, I had lots of books. I put them in bookcase up there uh, about halfway through the flight. And Yuri came in, he looked, and he said, what are you doing? I said, well, I like to have my books out. I like to look at it. It makes me feel good. And he said, well, what's John going to think about that? <laughs> and I said, well, he's not here. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the back end of Spectre. And you can see, uh, those are the big gray things are two cameras. <laughs> Uh, Earth viewing cameras. But then those white bags are all the uh, science equipment that we transferred over for John, and they're all stacked up there. And then that's where I had all the bags of science equipment stacked up uh, to take over to um, uh, the shuttle. This is another one of the large storms we saw where we were up there, Typhoon Yates. Uh, fortunately, none of them were around KSC on the 26th. <laughs> They were, they were just simply spectacular. If you could see those at night, uh, you saw all kinds of lightning. We had the Mir crew over to the shuttle for a, a dinner that we hosted. Uh, we treated them to some freeze-dried uh, local Cajun barbecue. Uh, <laughs> they enjoyed that very much. And it was time to go, and unfortunately. As we uh, had our formal farewell ceremony to say goodbye to really two very close friends of ours, uh, Valeria and Sasha. And then we said goodbye to uh, the new Mir crew member, and. Uh, it was a very emotional flight, I'd have to say. It was emotional picking Shannon up, and it was emotional saying goodbye to John. Uh, if you look at the hatch that they're closing, you can see the docking target on it. And if you look carefully at a still picture, you can see the repair we made to it uh, while we were up there. This is the undocking early in the morning. There are springs in the docking mechanism that push the two uh, space vehicles apart. And then once you get two feet away, we activate the jets, and uh, then Bill gave some uh, pulses to separate us at a, a more rapid rate.
This is a view out uh, one of the, uh, the truss camera, we call it. It's, it's an alternating, uh, alter, alternate docking camera. Again, there goes the docking module away from us. We drifted out to uh, about 150 feet, and then Bill and I traded places so that I could do the uh, fly around. And my hat's off to all the ground people that arranged the timing, so we got pictures like this. This is the southern island of New Zealand. The southern Alps are on there. Uh, our geologists are particularly interested in this area because it has a, a lot of volcanoes and some geologic faults. Again, the mirror in, a, in another attitude uh, during the fly around. It seemed to change colors depending on how close we were to the Terminator. It was really, really beautiful. This is off the coast of Australia. Uh, and that's a, that island that the mirror is approaching right now is Fraser Island. And the town of Bisbane is just up the coast from that. Here's the northeastern part of Australia again. It's um, one of the capes up there. And what you've got on the left side as we look at it is the Great Barrier Reef. And on the right side of Australia there is the Gulf of Carpentaria. Again, we did the fly around to set up shots for, uh, for the IMAX and again for a uh, mere photo survey. Then it was, really was time to go home. We finished up the science and the packing in the back and closed the doors. I couldn't figure out why Shannon wanted to watch this, but... Uh, <laughs> Then we turned our uh, space shuttle into the re-entry vehicle that it was designed to be. The pink out the windows is the fire or the plasma that surrounds the orbiter during re-entry. That stuff seems to reach a critical mass up around the tail and you get the explosions like that that give the orbiter a, a thump every time you see an explosion. That's sunrise over my right shoulder uh, while we're in a row there. Bill? Well, we had. Uh almost a 360 degree turn to get aligned with uh, runway 15 at the Cape, and it was a right-hand turn all the way around, so I looked at nothing but instruments, and Terry had a real nice view of the Cape. Uh, got rolled out on final, and uh, it was just the most perfect day you can imagine to come back to Florida. Just a light breeze, about 80 degrees, and uh, bright sunshine. Terry put the gear down there at 300 feet. Doing the final flare here at about 50 feet. We never did see the birds, by the way. <laughs> and they're coming on in. And I'll tell you, the orbiter just handles like a dream. You can see uh, a little bit of oscillation as the drag chute comes out. Nose uh, is cushioned onto the runway by the drag chute disc reefing. And then uh, doggone drag chute works so good that uh, you just don't even need any brakes hardly at all and uh, about 90 knots we just kind of tested them just to make sure they were working and we stopped with about uh, 3,000 feet to go there at uh, the Kennedy Space Center. We had a surprise mystery guest welcome us home I tell you, uh, we were uh, just terrifically honored and, and proud to be there, to be with uh, Shannon and welcome her home, to be the first to welcome her home, I guess, from, uh, from space, President Clinton and uh, Mr. Golden. We got a chance to give him one of, uh, one of our crew symbols and uh, crew hat and, of course, a welcome home Shannon t-shirt. So. 